in emphasis by contrast, we need to keep in mind that contrast can be lots of things. Since we're still working in black and white, we can't use color as a contrasting method, although that would be completely valid if we were using color. But we have a lot more variation to exploit, like size, rotation, angle, transformation, even texture and pattern. Notice in this gridded format that I've followed with this composition that all of them are alike except one. That's the goal, for all of them to be alike except one. Um, that first composition, I've just made it an outline instead of a fill, and so that's pretty much changed. This second one pretty much follows the same kind of gridded format. Um, where I change one of them. I think I draw over this with the pen tool, yeah. Draw over this whole thing with the pen tool. Or I might even cover over it, yeah. And so that's how it stands out. I think I changed this, I'm not really sure, I can't remember, I changed the next one. So we'll see what I do with the next one. I ended up not really liking any of these. Um, I, I think it's too easy. It's too easy to make a gridded um, kind of composition. And so I kind of shy away from those. Even though I might use them like to start off with, um, I always try to see how I can change it up. And that's what I want to show you here with this last one. I'm, I'm following this angled format. Um, you remember that diagonals are more powerful and more dynamic than horizontal or vertical lines. And the really cool thing that happened here was when I rotated this um, 180 degrees and scaled it back up, look at this great um, closure that's happening. There is a circle that is created with the combination of those two shapes, which was really like a happy accident. And I really like the way that turned out. So anyway, try your best, um, exp experiment and explore, and we'll see you in the next one.